um, Christian education, but for um, Elder uh, Shirley Bailey, let's give her a hand today. Amen, amen. It's nothing like the word of God. So we can all stand. I'm gonna attempt to give you a little song here. <laughs> we have come into this place to magnify the Lord and worship Him. We have come to this place and before the Lord and worship Him. We have come to this place the Lord and worship us Lord. Oh, we worship you, Jesus Christ. Let's sing that one more time for the Holy Spirit. We have come to this place to magnify the Lord and worship Him. the Lord and worship Him. We have come to this place to magnify the Right now, we're going to have um, our scripture reading. It's going to be by um, Minister Robinson, and our prayer will be by Elder Bailey. And then praise and worship will be going to um, be held by Ty Dawkins. Amen. Amen, saints. Thank the Lord for being here this morning. Thank the Lord for giving us a mind to want to be here. Thank God for believing that I was chosen, and we all were chosen, to be in this ministry and to even be here this morning. It was by the grace of God that we were chosen to be in a ministry that we can be under the word of Bishop White and be able to receive receive Jesus Christ and become sons of God. Amen. Amen. This morning's scripture reading, I'll be coming from St. John, the first chapter, and I'll begin in the 10th verse. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he 
power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his words. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is his name. Jesus, 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 Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. My Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. He's our Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Thank you, Lord. We, we want to thank you that we know your name is Jesus. Even when John spoke of the word, we want to thank you that we know you are the word. You are the word of truth. You are the word of life. And you're the word of light. We want to thank you this morning. We ask for you to come into our service, Lord. We ask in your precious name, minister to your people this morning. Give us a word straight from heaven. Some, oh Lord, might be troubled about something. But Lord, you are the burden bearer. We want to thank you. As we come before your throne, we ask for you to wash us, cleanse us in your precious blood the blood of the Lamb, for the remission of our sins. Have mercy upon us that we might enter into the throne of God, that the Father might be pleased with everything we do this morning. For when the Father is proud and approved of the word of God, the blessings, they do come down. Bless your people this morning. Most of all, bless the woman of God. Bless the word of God. Let it drive out darkness that may be in our minds. Change our minds if it's a wrong mind. Give us a right mind. That when we exit this place, the spirit of the Lord will still remain in our mind, in our thoughts. And we want to give you all the praise because your name is Jesus. All power given unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to say hallelujah. I want to say thank you, Jesus. Start with this song. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise oh i love you lord i love i 
Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. It's all because, because you care for me in such a special way. Yes, way. And yes, I praise you. We lift you up and we magnify your name. name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart and my mind. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me, you paid the price. Way back on Calvary, Calvary, and yes, I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I sing that one last time. My heart and my mind, my heart, my mind. Lord, my soul belongs. It's because you paid the price. For way back on Calvary, back on Calvary. And yes, I praise you. We lift you up and we magnify your name. And that's why my heart, oh, that's why. Sing, Lord, that's why my heart is filled. Because you've been so good, and that's why. You filled me with the Holy Ghost, and that's why. You made a way out of no way, and that's why. Lord, that's why my heart, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Oh, somebody say thank you, Jesus. Lord, our hearts are filled with praise this morning because you've been so good to us. And Lord, we want to thank you. Lord, we want to thank you. Lord, we come to tell you we love you this morning. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Oh, tell the Lord you love him this morning. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, because you've made a way out of no way. Lord, because I'm in my right mind this morning. Oh, because I have clothes on my back this morning. Lord, I want to thank you. Oh, you've been good to me this morning, and I want to thank you. Oh, come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, you're grateful for the Lord this morning. Truly the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Sing, sing I love Jesus. And he's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. And where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. Oh, I love Jesus, and he's my savior. When storms are raging, he's my, and where he leads me, I'm going to follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. Oh, let's sing that again. Oh, I love Jesus, and he's my Savior. When storms are raging, he's my shelter. And where he leads, I will follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. 
Oh, we're gonna sing that. Oh, I love, and he's my when storms. He's my shelter, and where he leads me, I will follow. Oh, I love, and he loves me. Oh, I love Jesus, and he's my savior. He's my, and where he leads me, I will follow. And where he leads me, I'm gonna follow. And where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He has been so good. I love the Lord. I love the Lord and I won't take. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Been so oh let's see that again. Yes, I love the Lord. I love the Lord and I won't tell Do you love the Lord? I really love the Lord. He has been so good. Yes, I love the Lord. I love the Lord and I won't Oh, sing it out to the Lord this morning. I love, I love the Lord, and I won't take it back. He has been so good. Oh, oh, oh he's so good. He's so good. See, Lord, you're good. He's been so, been so, you've been so good. Lord, you're good. He has been so good. Yes, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? He has been so good. Oh, been so good. He's so good. He's so good. He has been so good. Oh, 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 he's so good. See, Lord, you're good. He's so good. He's been so, you're so good. He's so good. You have been, oh, he has been, oh, he has, oh, he has, oh, he has so good to, oh, he's so good, he's so good, he's so good, he's so good.
somebody say hallelujah. Oh, somebody say thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. Oh, 
be here to meet everyone at your needs. Put your hands together. Oh, yeah, Lord. Oh, you better praise him for his grace and his mercy. Oh, how he raised you up one day. How he touched your body one day. How he made you whole. Oh. his name I'll call on his name cause something happens when we call on the name things begin to change he begins to move for us oh Jesus the lily of the valley the bright and morning star the solid rock he's the solid rock oh Jesus Oh, Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of God. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Call on his name, call on his name, Jesus, oh, Jesus. Somebody say yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. 
Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm reminded of Friday. The evangelist Leslie Small said, doesn't matter what it looks like. It don't even matter if you can't see your blessing. She goes, but it's on the way. She said, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't even matter if you see it, but it's on the way. And that just got me feeling happy on the inside. I've been thinking about that all week. She said, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't even matter if you can see the blessing, but it's on the way. Oh, well, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. That means everything will be all right. It might not look like it's going to be all right right now, but if you have faith, amen. Yeah. Somebody said, you just got to have faith. Yeah. Oh, amen. Are we doing testing? Amen. I've been instructed, Elder Rosa is going to give us a testimony this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I, I praise the Lord this morning and give an honor to Bishop White and Bishop Butler and also all of the elders and the saints and friends. I truly thank the Lord this morning for being here. And I really thank the Lord this morning because... He has kept me, he's keeping me, <coughs> and I thank the Lord I had an examination. Um, everyone does not know, I don't think, that I had breast cancer and um, in 19, well, in 2022, they removed uh, those cancerous tissue. And um, just recently, this past week, I went to the doctor, and um, the, I am cancer-free. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God is good, and his mercy endured forever. No matter what you're going through, and no matter what's happening to you, God is good all the time. Because the Lord knows your future. Hallelujah. He knows your future. And if you're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, you know your future. And I do thank the Lord this morning for being here. I thank the Lord for giving me strength this morning to come and to even to drive myself to the house of the Lord. And it feels good to be in the house of the Lord Amen. this morning. I thank the Lord for it. Amen. I say God is a good God. And I believe the Lord blesses and keeps her because she's faithful to the house of the Lord. Uh, if you're faithful to the house of the Lord, no matter how you feel, uh, no matter what's going on, he will bless you and he will honor you. And Elder Rosa is a prime example of what it looks like to press on for the Lord. And that's why the Lord is blessing her. He's touching her body continuously. Amen. But we got some good elders in this church. I was looking at Elder Bailey as she was dancing. And on Wednesday, we went to an event. And she said, I got to go. My legs are starting to hurt. But when she stood up here and did Christian education, and, and I was watching on live stream for the entire time I watched the live stream, she stood up and taught Christian education. Then she stood up in praise and worship. And then she stood up and got out there and danced because she is pressing on. The Lord is honoring her. The Lord is blessing blessing her. Oh, the elder shows so all you got to do is press on and he's going to honor you because he is a good God. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Oh, look at your neighbor and say press on. Somebody say press on because God is a good God. Oh, hallelujah. If there will be any testimonies of the goodness of the Lord. I mean, if you don't know, I got joy this morning. Amen. I, walk, I wake up with joy. Amen. Amen. Would there be any more testimonies of the goodness of the Lord? Amen. Son of the precious Holy Spirit. And the Lord brought me back to a situation where I couldn't see my way. I just couldn't see it. And I was having an issue, a political issue on my job. And they brought me to this big meeting at a, at a much higher level than even my director. And they said, you're going to say this. And you've been here 25 years. And I said, what about the deputy director? They said, oh, he just got here yesterday. They said, they'll believe it if you say it. 
And I said, well, it's not altogether true. And they said, we will write the narrative and you will say what we would like for you to say. And I said, Lord, I don't want to say nothing I know is not true. I know my name would be in the paper because that's what they, they'll put it on you and before you know it, you're, you're really the, sco the scapegoat. And I was having another political problem where they were um, just with another, uh, with, with my, I've never had a problem with my boss, but I have one with this particular one. And so I remember going to Bishop and I said, Bishop, I've been dealing with it for a minute. I don't like to go to Bishop for a two week thing. It had almost be a whole, whole year for me. And I went to Bishop and I said, this is what's happening. And it's getting, it's, it's getting all the way turned up to where this person is literally out of control. And he came and he said to me, first thing he said, he said, does he do it to anybody else? And I said, yes, he does, but he's kind of really honing in on me right now. And I remember um, he said, after today, he said, tell him after today, you ain't gonna worry me no more. And I wanna, and I wanna let you know something. I had a situation that was just, it was just chaotic, and I know it was nobody but the Lord, because my job was very busy. And so I looked up one day, and I know the Lord showed me my brother was sick, and when I went to work, they said he had an aneurysm. I was supposed to go to another high, kind of high-level meeting. I had my paperwork together, my boss said, give it to me. And I said, well, I already sent it to chief, chief of staff. He said, well, give it to me anyway, so I gave him a copy. And I went to the hospital, and he went to the meeting, and they stopped him at HR, and they took his badge, and they took all of his stuff. They said we had to get him downtown. And they took all of his information. They said, you won't be coming back to work anymore. I want to thank God because that was one person that lets you know I've golfed with these guys. They're my friends. And you're not going to get to say nothing about me. I'm going to do just what I feel like doing in here. And I want to thank God for his mercy, mercy and his grace. But that wasn't it. So I continued to work, and I had to work with somebody else at the same level. And then she started turning up. And she was our communications person. And then she said to me one day, you need to stay here. I was already Friday night at 6.30 in the snow. I said, I have to go home now. This is, this is ridiculous. We, if these numbers aren't right now, they won't be right on the weekend. Let's do it on Monday. And on the way home, the spirit said, pay your house off. And I said, pay my house off? He said, pay your house off. And I said, pay my house? Am I hearing it? And then it got loud, Sister Leslie. It got real loud. So when I went home, I started figuring out how to pay my house off. I tried to pay it off, and they said, no, we put your money over here instead of over here. Then I said, next time, I said, tell me what I owe exactly. I'm going to pay the New York bank that you guys work with so I can get my house paid for. It wasn't 14 days later that I went upstairs. I had another meeting. It was just a lot of stress at that time. And another meeting, and I'm preparing for this meeting, and I was so tired, I went to a party that Minister Johnson had for her, her granddaughter over here. And I, went, and I went home and I cleaned my house and washed the clothes and upstairs changing the bed and this kind of thing. And I, and I was, must have fell asleep on the bed and I woke up, all my shades were open, lights were on. I said, oh my gosh, I ran down the stairs and I fell all the way down. I had, um, I have um, French doors on my door, so they're glass, and I pushed it open and I fell down. And I didn't have to go through it, thank you Jesus, but I fell down. And it wasn't that time later that I didn't know it, but I wasn't gonna be working for seven more months. And the Lord told me to pay my house off. I want to thank God because when you don't see a way and you don't know how he's going to do it, and you don't, let me just say this too. Then my boss called me and he said, well, what foot is it? Somebody say, when the Lord does it, he does it right, amen? He said, if it's the right foot, you can still drive in. I said, it is the very right foot. That's why I'm not driving it. He, he made sure that it was the foot I couldn't use, amen? And so I want to thank him for that. And he will do it the entire way. He will fix it up. The boss was gone. I was out of there. I had time to breathe. You wouldn't even know I had a, a, a thing in my leg with eight screws. God is a good God. He hasn't changed my walk or anything in terms of limping. God was good. I needed the time off. And it wasn't nobody but Sister Wanda that told me. She said, Minister Gobble, you wouldn't have got out of that with seven months with pay. No other way. And I got to thinking about it. I said, she's right. I would have still had to go back in there half sick and still do under that pressure and that work. And I want to let somebody know God will make a way. He will turn things around. He has the inside track. He knows how to get done what you can't get done. Talk to whoever you need to talk to and talk to them in their spare time. And then he'll work your situation out where you don't have to even worry about paying the house off and how I'm gonna use 70% of my money to pay big bills, God, he took care of me, and I wanna thank him. So whoever needs a way, God has a way, amen? Pray the strength, give my strength in the Lord.
So I said, hallelujah. Now about you. And soon she said, devil, you're not going to worry me anymore. Something popped into my mind. Did something pop into your mind? That's what we got to do. Bishop said, I think two Sundays ago, he said, we got to just rebuke the devil. Uh, so sometimes we just got to rebuke the devil and let him know you're not going to worry me anymore because I serve a God that has all power. And Ephesians tell me he can do exceedingly and abundantly above all I could ever ask or think. Amen. Amen. Say, devil, you're not going to worry me anymore. Oh, somebody say hallelujah and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. The devil is not going to worry us no more. We're going to rebuke him each and every time we feel like it's the devil. Just rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. We are God's children. We are his chosen generation. We are his royal priesthood. So devil got to get back every time he try to come up. We got to have a defense for him because Jesus is our rock. And he is our salvation. Amen? Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for your um, praise and worship. Sorry, Dawkins. And then we're going to go with the offering this evening. It's I mean, this afternoon is going to be Minister um, Gobal. Praise the Lord, saints. If you would get your offering. You know, God has been so good and merciful to all of us giving us jobs, giving us time. Some of us are getting ready to retire in a minute, amen. Gonna give you some free time, hallelujah. Jesus, we've been working forever. I wanna thank God for retirement, amen. <laughs> He's gonna give you time. He's gonna give you money. So we ask today that you would, if you get your offering together, just stand to your feet because he's worthy. Find some time today to rebuke the devil, amen. Rebuke the devil out of your money, out of your finances, out of your home, out of your life. He's been so good. If you have your tithes and offerings, that would be great. And any other thing you have, if you don't have anything to give today, just come by by faith and touch the basket. Amen? Because he is able to open up the windows of blessing, windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that you will not even be able to withhold and be able to put in a basket. Amen? He does so many great things for us just by faith. Lift up your offering. Stand to your feet and lift up your offering in your right hand. Father, we come to you in the holy, precious name of your son, Jesus, and we want to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We first of all just want to thank you for waking us up this morning in our right minds today. We want to thank you for making it even to the house of God. We want to thank you for being among saints and friends today. But we really just thank you for your goodness and for your mercy and for your grace. And you do deserve all the praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for finances, Lord, because you know we need money, Father, to um, keep the church business going, the lights on, and clean the rugs, and all the things we have to do outside. This is our home, and this is your tabernacle. So we ask you, God, to just help us, Father, give not only what we have today, but to continue to give more each and every time we come. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything. We thank you for this building, Lord. And we thank you that we're able to use our funds to keep the building going and keep all the things that have to happen in the building going. This is the headquarters church, and we always want to look beautiful, lights on, windows nice and clean, outside beautiful, inside beautiful, and we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, and we give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's turn to the center aisle. Praise the Lord, saints. So right now we're going to have a, um, 
musical selection before we go into the word of God. And we're asking for our solo from Minister Sharice. Give her a hand, please. Somebody say praise the Lord. Lord. Giving honor to God who is the head of my life. Giving honor to Bishop and giving honor to the spirit of the Lord that is in this place that abides within us today. And I was just um, thinking of a song, but Elder Rosa had just mentioned just a little phrase. It says, um, because he lives, that's the song I'm going to sing, but she had mentioned something um, in her testimony that kind of triggered that song. So I'm just going to sing that song um, because we thank God for Jesus today. If it had not been for him, we would not be here today. We would not be saved. We wouldn't even be in our right mind. But I want to thank the Lord for Jesus today. God sent his son. And they call him Jesus.
cross for all of our sins and I think that he died on the cross for my sins and I just think that he lives. He's risen and I know deep down inside everything anything that I'm going through, anything anybody else is going through, everything is going to be alright because he can make it alright because see what? He lives. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Give him all the glory. The speaker we're going to have um, Elder um, Clark, and she's going to give us the word of God. Praise the Lord. Let us give her a hand, please. I agree. He does live. Yeah. If he didn't live, we wouldn't be here this morning. Yeah. I would be dead in my trespasses and sins. Actually, I'd probably be dead by now. But thanks be to God. By his power. Oh, come on now. Somebody else in here has felt his power. He brought me out. With a strong arm. It took a strong arm. It took an outstretched hand. You know, when you're down and somebody their hand to you, that means they're willing yeah. to help you. Yeah. I want to encourage 
in this morning that if you need the Lord, whatever you're going through, he's willing. He's willing. And he's able to bring you out. Bring you out. Yes, he is. Thank God this morning for being here. I didn't choose this of myself or my own. God chose me. He did. And the Bible says that God has set in the house of the Lord. He set us in various places as it pleases him. Now sometimes it don't please one another, but it pleases God. But I thank him this morning. Hallelujah, that he chose me. Are you grateful this morning that he chose you? Hallelujah. No doubt everybody that's in this house today is because the Lord has called you. He wants to choose you. If he hasn't, he wants to choose you. But I want to give honor, first of all, to Bishop Joseph White. He is a man of God. I don't care what the devil says now. I don't care what the devil says. And I everybody, you was talking about your friend this morning that had that mind. You couldn't change your mind. You can't change my mind on that. I've seen him work too many times. I've seen the power of God work through him too many times in this house. The water has been troubled. Bishop is a man of God. He has a word of God. And he will teach you the truth. You need to know the truth. Praise the Lord. Sometimes the truth is hard. Sometimes it's something we don't want to hear. But you know what, Mr. Justin, if you don't hear it now, when you stand before God, he's going to tell you the truth. But it'll be too late. But God has given us an opportunity to get it right now. That's his grace and his mercy. Get right now. Right now. Today. Right now. He said, today you hear my voice. Hard and not your heart. And I know you say, well, you're not God. No, but I'm his representative. I am a woman of God, and I'm speaking on his behalf. Hallelujah. But I give honor to Bishop White because he is a great man of God. For him to hold on to the word that he has spoken for 55 years. Come on now. That's a long time. And it's a long time to preach the truth when you have so much opposition. Do y'all know what opposition is? Anybody say it to fill with the Spirit, you know what opposition is. Because we deal with it every day. Powers of darkness come against the people of God every day. But thanks be to God. We've learned how to stand fast. We've learned how to hold our ground. We learn how to use our weapon. Yeah. Your word is the weapon of God. We need to tear down the lies of the enemy. Yeah. He's, a liar. He's a liar. I said it on Friday. I said it again. He's a liar. He's, He's a, a liar. liar. The father of lies. Yeah. That's what keeps people in the world. Lies. lies. That's why church people are confused. Lies. Uh, right. Right. But I honor that man of God. And I've said for years, I was like Elder Bailey was saying this morning, when we came to the house of God by his grace and mercy, I didn't know nothing about Jesus. I didn't know anything about salvation. Salvation, what's that? And the bad thing is I was raised in a Baptist church. You would think uh, they would have told me all I knew was Daniel and Elias did. But I didn't have any understanding of being saved, delivered, filled with the Holy, nothing. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why I praise him. Because it's grace and it's mercy. Bishop taught us the truth, and he taught me everything that I know about Jesus. And he's not just speaking. You know, a lot of people are speaking. Jim Jones just spoke, and they drank the Kool-Aid just because he told them to drink the Kool-Aid. But this is the word of God. I don't care what nobody say. This is God's word. And the men who wrote this Bible were all inspired by the Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost inspired them to write this word. 
right. and everyone that wrote a part in this Bible were approved of God. Is that what the woman of God was saying this morning? We need to be approved of God. That's why Bishop Weissman tells us to study. Study. And the devil tells you, don't read. You ain't got time. You got to do this for your husband. You got to do this for your kids. Oh, my God. He keeps us running. But the Holy Ghost is saying, study. Now, I'm telling you what the Lord told me. I am a servant of the Lord. My body, the Bible says, well, the song says, my body belongs to God. My body, my mind, my soul belongs to God. And God has an expectation of his people. On Sunday morning, 930, you know what God wants from me? Oh, y'all know, y'all got the same Holy Ghost, don't you? 930, the Spirit speaks to me. Tuesday night, 8 o'clock. Spirit says, get ready at a certain time. 7 o'clock, okay, get ready. Because you got to get out here and be Friday, joy night. But the Spirit speaks to me. Y'all me to turn my back for a minute. I'm not. But the Spirit has been speaking to the people of God. He speaks to us because he owns us. And, you know, as, as much as people like to think, and I've heard them say over the years, I'm my own man. Nobody tell me what to do. I'm my own woman. I run my life. But the reality is you're going to be under the mastery of one or the other. Either God is going to be your God or Satan is going to be your God. I'm going to show you the scripture in a minute. But I want to also give honor to our assistant pastor. She's a woman of God, and she's a prophet. <laughs> Bishop Mary Butler. Mm -hmm. That's why we want to stir the woman up to go to the elect ladies meeting. This is her first year. And we want to show her that not only the first jurisdiction, but the pool of Bethesda, we need to be behind this bishop. Yeah. Amen. 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 Find a way to get there somehow. If you do have a desire, the Lord will make a way for you. Praise the Lord. But people have a lot of uh, opinions and attitudes that are not aligned with the scripture. And so when Bishop was talking last week, he said, out of all the Christians, and he asked me, called my name, he says, how many of the Christians do you think are saved? And I thought about it for a second. I said, a very small percent. But now let me explain to you what a Christian is. And this is what I told him, and this is what I believe. As a matter of fact, I looked at some statistics. I Googled it. Of the five top religions, Christianity is the largest. So now, uh, America is known as a Christian country. But who says they are Christian? Well, if your church is a Protestant church, then that's a Christian church. We're not Catholic, we're Christians. And if you were brought up in a Baptist church, then you identify yourself as being a Christian. So because I was brought up in a Baptist church, it's like, yeah, I'm a Christian. But now was I living holy? Was I living a saved life? But I was still a Christian. So if you're, if you're looking at Christians in America, there are millions of us. But if you're looking at those who are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, there's only a few. And if you notice, now I think it was one of the points um, Sister Tabsco had brought out last week, that in Antioch, those people that were preaching the word of God were considered Christians. But the writers of the New Testament books, and the main writer is Paul. Paul calls us saints. There is a difference. Hallelujah. So now, you know, who's going to make it to the city? That's the question. And so many people think, well, I got a Christian background, 
My grandmother was a Christian. My grandfather used to be the pastor of a church. I'm a Christian. And you know, I've had people stand at the pulpit, and, and I used to ask, I don't ask anymore. I used to say, are you saved? And they took a moment to think, and it was like, well, I was baptized. So in their mind, salvation is equivalent to being baptized. And they feel like if you went down in the water and came up, that you're okay with God. Even though you might be living with a woman, living with a man, smoking a little dope, drinking a little this, drinking a little that. But the Bible says, be not deceived. Neither liars, nor adulterers, or idolaters, or fornicators, or effeminate, talking about the homosexual, are going to make it into the city. Not one of them. So you call yourself a Christian. This is, right now, Sister Liz, this is considered the realm of profession. That's what it says in the Bible, the King James, the Dates Bible, because this is a time where everybody saved. And they use that word very lightly. The, uh, what I'm gonna say, the singers, the R&B singers, save. The rap singers, save. The jazz people, save. Even the trans, whatever, LBGTQ, whatever, saved. You know, they're in the churches too. And according to them, they're going to the city. But according to the Bible, they're lost. There's some churches, and I think I read not too long ago, there's the Methodists were having some conflict with inside because some of the Methodists say you can be, I say LBGQ or whatever, and you can be a minister. And then some of them were saying, no, they, they can't be a minister. But for me to minister to you as the people of God, I need to be holy. In the Old Testament, when the high priest went in for the people, he had to be holy. Oh, yes, he did. And there was a, a high priest, the first one was Aaron. And Aaron had two sons, Abihu and Nadab. And they set up some strange fire. And guess what God did? He sent down some fire and burned them up. Yes, he did. Because they weren't holy. You got to be holy. You know, if you're not living holy, like bishops were talking about playing church, some people play church. But you know, if you're not living right, and you're not living a sanctified life, you should not be coming up on this pulpit. You should not be holding this mic. Come on now, church. We're, we're, we're coming to the end of the age. Jesus is coming soon. Get right, church. And let's go home. I don't know about you, but this is not my home. I got dual citizenship, oh, Gary. I'm a citizen of America, but I'm a citizen, more important, of heaven. One day, I'm going to the city of God. One day, I'm going to stand before the king. Now, we got a lot of kings. King Charles or whatever over in London. This is the one that was married to Diana and was having an affair with whoever he's married to now. Hello? Yep. But that king. That's right? That's right. Bishop said when they say the, the um, Ohio State University, that means there's only one. The, the Ohio State University. So I'm talking about the king of all kings. Far above every principality. Far above every power. Far above every name that was named. At the name of Jesus, yeah. every knee is going to bow. Yeah. King Charles is going to have to bow to the name of Jesus right. one day. Oh, yes, he is. Yeah. I'm talking about the king. Yeah. And so, um, 
you know, Satan is a master deceiver. And I think um, when you do anything for a given period of time, you, you become good at it. Is that true? Of course it is. And so if you think about it, if Satan was around in Lucifer's world, and the Bible says he can deceive the nations, he did deceive the nations, and to the point where God caused darkness. And like uh, Elder Betty was using the example today about the eclipse. You know, when the moon, I think it is, came in front of the sun, everything became dark. It was darkness. But Satan's been working his work for a long time. He's good at it. But greater. Oh, come on now, church. Greater is he that's in you, that's in me, than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that we've been made aware of Satan's devices. That's why I love Christian education. Because Bishop exposes. Oh, it's good when evil's being exposed. He exposes the evil work of the enemy. So when you look at, well, who's, uh, let's turn to Romans 6 chapter real quick. Romans is, Romans is 6 chapter. Uh, let's see. In Romans the 6th chapter. I'm looking for the scripture where he says, here it is, it's in Romans 6, and let's start in 14. For sin, he's talking about the person that's been saved and born again, shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, those of us who have been filled with the Holy Ghost, we're not under the law, but we're under grace. Aren't you glad you're under grace? Yeah. Woo, I'm telling you, the law... The, the way things went, when they was under the law, it's like, oh, my God. When the Holy Ghost would go through the wilderness and he would kill 10,000 at one time. But grace, we're under grace and truth. He said, but you're not under the law. He says, but you are under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid for we know that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey. Now, how many masters do we have? We got two masters. You're either under the obedience to Jesus and God the Father, or you're under the obedience to Satan. And even though we will many times profess, well, I'm on the Lord's side. I'm for God. The question is, who are you yielding your bodies to? Because we're not going to heaven according to our profession. We're going to make it to the city because of the life that we live and our fruits and our labor. You know, you can't, uh, an apple tree's not going to bear figs, and a pear tree is not going to bear oranges, but as a tree is sown into the ground, when it grows up, that's the fruit you're going to find on that tree. And so you can say, I'm saved. You can say, I believe the Lord. You can say, I'm of God. But who are you yielding your body to? Is that what it says? That's what it says. So if you're living a holy and a righteous life, according to the word of God, we're going to make it in the city. But if you're not living a holy and a righteous life, when you come into a setting such as this, where the spirit is over the church, and the spirit of God is in this place, and God is calling you to come out, the Lord is calling you 
to make a change. What type of change do I need to make? Let's start with giving your life to the Lord. And when we sincerely give our life to the Lord, then he gives us the power. Somebody need power this morning. Let's go over to our scripture in John. 1 John, I think John was, to me, he called himself John the Beloved because he was very close and very dear to Jesus. John was full of the Holy Ghost, and John had power with God. And I was reading the other day how that John uh, ended up on the island of Patmos, and it was a Greek island. And the reference says that on that island there was a prison, but the only ones that were sent to that prison were the worst criminals. The people who raped, went into the house and raped the mother and raped the daughter. Somebody who went in and killed the children, killed the father. I mean the worst of the worst. They were sent to this prison on the island of Patmos. And then here's John, a righteous man, holy man. He got sent there for preaching for Jesus, preaching the truth, preaching about the Son of God. And for that reason alone, they put him on the island of Patmos. But John was a revelator. Oh, God gave him revelation. <laughs> and he said, I was uh, like in heaven. He said, I'm not sure if I was in the spirit or if I had a vision. And it was so deep. But that's when God gave him revelation. And that's when God gave him the revelation about the city of God. And about the stones in the walls. And about the tree of righteousness. And about the river. Come on now. That's where he got that revelation. When he talks about those, the demons and how at the end Satan's going to make his last uh, attempt to come against the church, to come against Christ. But the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail. Come on, this is the church of the living God. This church has power. This is a great house. The enemy has tried so many ways to come against us and tear this place down. But God wouldn't let him. The Lord would not let him. So now, uh, talking about the, back to the realm of profession, so many people saying, oh, I'm saved, I know the Lord, I know the Lord. The people who are just partying and, you know, just, yeah, just really having a good time, so they think, smoking the cigarettes, they vaping, they smoking dope, they doing orgies, all, all manner of wickedness. Satan knows he already has them. That's obvious. And all he has to do is keep uh, the people who produce the songs, the people who produce the movies, the people who produce the, the venues for uh, all types of wickedness, all he has to do is keep feeding them. So as you know, over the years, there's never a point where it's like, oh, we haven't seen a new movie in uh, a month. Oh, no, he's always feeding them. Because it keeps the unrighteous. Yeah. Satan's not worried about them. Yep. So now Satan has another group that he's learned how to work with that's supposed to be righteous. He said, okay, now I have another deception for the church. Somebody say the church. The church. And that's why you find so many churches not preaching the truth. So many churches who are propagating lies. They don't see it as lies, but it's lies. If it's not according to the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, then it's a lie. And we have learned by the Word of God and through Bishop White how to detect a lie. And it's like uh, Elder Bay was giving an example, said she was following a lady on YouTube and the lady, I guess you were impressed by her up until the point where you found out she was uh, 
apostolic. So now, for those of you who don't understand what apostolic is, those are the ones, they're, they're called the oneness group. They're the ones that say that God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost are all the same person. And that's a lie. Somebody say that's a lie. I hope you understand that. That is a lie. God is himself, the Father. Jesus, who was the Word, is his Son. And the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. But they are not all one. So uh, I was looking at another scripture over in 1 Timothy 2 and 15. And this is Paul writing. Paul was writing to Timothy. I'm sorry, it's 2 and 5. And he says, for there is one God, one true God, one mediator between God and men. The man, Jesus Christ. You know what a mediator is. A mediator means I've got two parties who are not at agreement, and we need somebody that will hear both sides, try to bring them together. So Jesus has to be somebody different than the Father. And men, why did Jesus have to bring us together? Because we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We are the enemies of God. We were the enemies of the cross. But God wanted to reconcile us and atone us. Atone means at one. We were apart, but to bring us together at one. But there needed to be a mediator. His name is Jesus. He can't mediate himself. But he mediated between God and between man. That's how we got saved. I thank God for the death of Jesus. You know, I don't um, celebrate anyone for dying. I don't feel glad that it, I mean, I just hate death. I hate death. Can I say that? I hate death. But right now, that's the way of life. But the good thing is, if you live holy, and if you live right, that when you die, if you die, if you die, why do I say if? Because he's coming back soon. We just might be alive when he comes back. But if you die, you have this promise of God the Father that you will open up your eyes in the holy city of God. But Satan is on the warpath. He's trying to deceive all manner of men. And Bishop keeps uh, working this word. He keeps working it because he wants to get it in our mind, deep down in our soul. A clear understanding that God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost are three different persons. Some of us may have been exposed to the oneness religion. And it's a strong spirit. But the yoke can be broken. The chains can be broken. God is a breaker of the yokes. He is a fixer of those that are broken. He will fix the brokenhearted. Yes, he will. He will mend the brokenhearted. He will deliver the mind. Somebody's mind, no doubt, this morning needs to be delivered. God is a deliverer. Far above. Oh, yes, he is. All the powers that are coming against you, he's far above. Hallelujah. Power, one writer says, belongs to God. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Power belongs to him. Lucifer wouldn't have had what he had unless God gave it to him. When God created him in heaven, he gave him a, a degree of power. But he misused it. Just like some of our men today. They misuse the power. But it gives you power and authority. You need to honor it. Use it honorably. We're all going to have to give an account before God one day. But that is his inception for the church. If it can get you mixed up with the wrong doctrine, and you think you're on your way, yeah, I'm going to heaven. But you know what? I, I used to work with a young lady. 
years ago, and she was in the Oneness Church, and she knew I was in the Church of the Living God, and she used to tell me I wasn't saved. Why? Because I wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus. I was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. She said, well, you're not saved. I said, yes, I am. So we would go back and forth, back and forth, and after a while, I was just like, you know, okay, you think you believe what you believe, I believe what I believe. So at a later time, uh, I hadn't seen her for a while, and we had a mutual friend, and I saw Gloria one day, and I said, well, her name, the other lady's name was Linda, too. I said, hey, Gloria, what happened to Linda? I'm not going to call her last name. And she had this funny look on her face, and she said, well, uh, she had a friend that was in prison, and her friend was released. I said, really? After her telling me I wasn't, she told me, other quad said, you ain't saved. <laughs> said, okay. So when I saw this Linda, I was walking by in the warehouse one day, and when I saw her, I, I didn't say anything. I didn't look at her funny. I just like, you know, okay, how you doing, Linda? She got really defensive and put her arms, and she said, well, every woman needs a little bit every now and then. Reading between the lines. But I'm the one that wasn't saved. That's a lie. So I, I thank God for Bishop's teaching. It is so, that's the one thing I think about when people say, well, I'm not going to the church of the living God anymore. You need an absolute and clear understanding of what it takes to make it to the city. And you can try to home study yourself. That ain't going to work. Because God has set in the church people to teach you. Prophets, teachers, preachers, evangelists. God set them in the church just for that reason to teach you. So this home study stuff ain't going to work. No, it don't work. We need to know the truth. And we need to know now. So get right church. Get right church. And let's go home. Home is just a few days away. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. Well, who's going? Anybody who wants to go. This train don't carry no liars. This train. This train don't carry no fornicators. This train. This train is going to glory. You want to get on board? Here's your ticket. Sign up and come on. We're going to heaven. We're going to the city. And God wants to make sure that we are very clear, very clear about this teaching. And that we are very clear, have a clear understanding. And make sure that if you say I'm saved, that your salvation is in line with John's teaching. John said, he will give us power. Power to walk right. Power to live right. You know why I needed power? Because before the Lord saved me, I was in prison. I'm probably the only one. Before he saved me, I was imprisoned by Satan. And all of his lies. And you know, when I say in prison, you know, I was able to get up and get my keys and get in my car, go to McDonald's if I want to, Wendy's if I want to. So you know that's not what I'm saying. It's spiritual prison. Spiritually, I was imprisoned until I heard the word, until I opened my heart, until I accepted. I accepted the Lord. And when you accept the Lord, he says, as many as those who receive him or believe him, to them he gave power. You know, it takes power to come out of prison now. The righteous souls that were in paradise, they was in prison by Satan. But when Jesus died, and Jesus went down to paradise, uh, he went down with the keys of heaven. He said, Satan, open up the doors and let him out. And when, when uh, Jesus went, went back up into heaven, it said he led captivity captive. They were captive. Sin is a prison. And we think, oh, you know, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing my thing. No, you're doing the devil's thing. Right. Right. 
But he set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. So he had to give me power to become a son. I, w I was a son of Satan. I think at one point the Pharisee said, oh, we're children of Abraham. He said, no, your father's the devil. Your father, your daddy's the devil. So my question is this morning, who's your father? Think about it. Who is your father? And if your father is not Jesus, you need to give your life to him. You know, one sad thing is we never know how many opportunities the Lord gives us to repent. Some people like to go to a church where you can sit down and just, they tell you, oh, God is love. Oh, the Lord is so good. He's so merciful. And he is all those things. But if you're in sin, the first thing you need to do is repent. And once you repent and open up your heart to the Lord, he will come in. And he will bring about a change. I know I'm talking to somebody this morning needs a change. It's like I keep doing what I'm doing and I can't stop. And I know I need something different. And sometimes people don't understand what they need, but what you need is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus will make the difference in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need power this morning. Everybody stand to your feet. And if you need prayer this morning, if anybody wants to be saved this morning, here's an invitation from God. We want you to come down. If you need salvation, here's the time. Somebody had to open up the doors one day when I was in sin and said, if you want to be saved. And when you come into the house of God and you watch the people of God saved and filled, testifying, raising up holy hands, dancing before the Lord, I realized they had something that I didn't have. And I said, I want that. But if you're that type of person and you see there's something that we do and you don't feel fully a part of it, it just might be that you need the Lord to come in. He'll come in today. He'll come in to stay. Open up your hearts. Open up your hearts. You don't want to close your heart because you don't know when it might be your last time. And people just like... Oh, no, not today, not today. But he said, the day you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. There's not that much in the world. And as much as he tries to make it seem like, oh, it's just glitter and gold, it's only for a season. Sin is only for a season. But after a while, after a while, it'll all be over. There's going to come a time when there's not going to be no more bars, no more liquor stores. No more liquors and Krogers. No more prostitution. No more playboys. There's going to come a time. He's going to burn the world with fire to purify, to sanctify the earth. So, so the, uh, what is it, the guys that dig, do the digging, the astrologer, what not, what do you call them? Yes, yes, yes. So the archaeologists won't be able to dig, dig, dig and find uh, a bottle of Johnny Walker. Oh, no. It's going to all be burned up. Everything's going to be burned up. There'll be no remembrance of sin. It's going to be holy. Holy. And the city of God is going to come down upon the earth one day. And he said there's going to be a highway of holiness. Oh, come on now. That makes me happy. A highway of holiness. None but the righteous. You won't be able to walk on that highway unless you're righteous. Come on now. Praise the Lord. What we're going to pray for, Sister J.D. Come on down, Sister J.D.
and pray for Sister Chavette. The Lord knows all things. The Lord knows just what you need. And he's been watching you. And he's hearing you. And the Lord wants to bring about some changes. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you, thank you. for your grace, grace, for your mercy. Lord, I pray, oh God, because you are merciful Mercy. and a kind God. You see everything. Bless Sister Chevette. Lord, she's been holding on for a long time. And I'm asking you to change some things. Turn some things around, oh God. In her favor, oh God. Give her the very blessing. Her desire, oh God. Lord, I pray that you draw her closer to your throne. Help her to see you coming yeah. soon. Really begin to seek you in prayer. Yeah. Read and study the word of God. Give it to her, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the honor and glory. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord says, Yes, thank you, Lord. You have the word. Yes. You were raised up with the word. And he remembers you knew the word. And you still have the word. But he's saying, take the word. Take the word. And take it down in prayer. Yes. Speak the word. Yes. In prayer. Find the word. Find that word. There is a word. There is a word. That Thank will you, drive Lord. the very powers of hell. Drive them out. There is a word. Yes. As you search the scripture, said the Lord, I will give you that word. Yes. When you hear that word, yes. you will know, you will know for surety yes. that the spirit of the Lord has Hallelujah. driven out that darkness. Drive it out, Lord. You will know it Thank you, Jesus. because you will see the light. Thank you, And God. you will, the Lord said, you will walk in it. Thank you, Send Jesus. The of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for Elder Rosa. Oh, the Lord yes. knows everything, Elder Rosa. Yes, he does. He yes. sees you every day. Yes. When you're laying in your bed, you're aching. Lord, I can't do this. And Lord, the Lord sees everything. But God is a faithful God. Yes. He is your father. Hallelujah. And your father will not forsake you. He said, as an earthly father, when the children ask for bread, he said, I'm not going to give them a stone. And if they ask for meat, I'm not going to give them a servant. But God is going to provide all of your needs. You. He wants to strengthen your heart and encourage you to live. Everybody has their time, but God wants you to live. Hallelujah. There's much work that needs yeah. to be done. Yeah. You have ability in the Holy Ghost. He has nurtured you down through the years. God says, live. I shall not die. I'm not going to die. That's a lie of the devil. I'm not going to die. But live and declare the works of the Lord. Therefore, be strong in the Lord. In the power of his might. The Lord is with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If anybody else needs prayer, we just want you to stand out in the aisle healing, deliverance, whatever you need. Thank you, Father. Father, we just thank you for the many souls that are standing in the our way because they recognize they need help. Yeah. And Lord, we know that David said, all of my help, all of my help coming from the Lord. And Lord, we're looking into the hills Oh, God, we don't have help within ourselves. But all of our help, oh, God, it comes from the Father above. It comes from the city of Zion. We ask you to send help, Lord. Strengthen the feeble knees. Raise up the bowed down head. Strengthen the bodies, oh, God. Deliver the wicked soul. Break every yoke and chain over their life. In the name of Jesus. Father, we'll give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap.
Let the church say amen. Let the church say Hallelujah. Thank you for the word Elder Clark gave us this evening. I want to thank you for the word. Take the word with you. Keep it with you all week. And, 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 and ask the Lord to change and show you some things. And have the Lord to bring you back here next time on Tuesday. We're here on Friday. And we're here on Sunday morning for Christian education. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go ahead. Um, only announcements that I see here is a prayer request. It says prayer for brother Dr. Allen Hammond. His brother was admitted to the hospital after a suffering a stroke and heart attack, and he's in Cleveland, Ohio. We know God is able. We have many testimonies to know God is able. So we're going to make sure we say a prayer for Brother Allen, for his brother. Is there any other announcements? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're going to definitely pray. Um, call out uh, Minister Sister Ing, um, Yolanda, Yolanda um, Davis. Thank you. Any other um, pressing announcements? Yes, we will definitely keep, um, say a prayer for everyone, all our prayer requests, um, any other pressing announcements, any prayer requests? Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just wanted to invite you back out this evening, amen, for our youth and young adult service, amen. If you received a blessing from the Lord tonight, uh, this morning, we want you to come back tonight, amen, to get another blessing from the Lord, amen, at 7 p.m. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If there's any more, um, no more announcements, we're going to have Elder Clark to dismiss us. Let's all stand to our feet. Praise the Lord. Now you got your spiritual food, you can go home and get your natural food. <laughs> get your pork chops. Praise the Lord. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent, one from another. In Jesus' name.